What you're about to see is a remote viewing session conducted by Aziz Brown. He did it totally blind. And when he describes what he saw in the session, understand that he will not know what the target is. You're going to know because I'm going to tell you right now. And you'll be able to watch what he's talking about with that knowledge. But remember, when he's describing it, he doesn't know what the target is. For this remote viewing session, for deep news, the target is Joe Biden, the president of, president of the United States, in December of 2023. When he's thinking about the idea of the UAP, UFO disclosure issue. Now, the main concern, concern one, is how much does Joe Biden know about the ET, UAP, UFO situation? We're wondering how much he's actually been told and how much it's uh, on the front burner in his mind. Again, December 2023 is focus one. And then Aziz is going to move into focus two. Focus two is during the Democratic National Convention on August 22nd, 2024. That's the last day of the convention when the acceptance speech normally takes place. And on that day, that's focus two, we're interested in has there been any change uh, in Joe Biden's thoughts about the extraterrestrial UAP UFO phenomenon. Has it become an issue on the front burner or is it you know, still not, not relevant or is it something being sort of ignored? So we're interested in December 2023, that's Focus One, and August 22nd, 2024, the night of the Democratic National Convention uh, in Chicago. But that's Focus Two. All right, here's the session. All right, Aziz, so we are doing deep news now. And deep news, um, you know nothing about the target, right? Correct. You've done your session uh, totally blind and uh, we'll go through your session and then afterwards we'll um, tell you what the target is. Is it okay? Sounds good. Okay. All right. So why don't we start, uh, we'll skip the preliminaries. Why don't you start on uh, page six where you zoom into uh, what you identify as subject A. All right, so subject A was an older male looking subject and it seemed like he had formal attire on and this light hues hair. Um, it sort of seemed like he's got a little bit of just older wrinkles on the face, uh, flabbiness to the cheeks and stuff. But uh, on the next page, I started to go into the, um, I had some deductions, like I thought maybe he looked a little like Bernie Sanders or something like that. But uh, just an older, pale-faced male subject with formal attire on, a stout body type, and the attire was in a dark navy hue. And, well, as I started to deep mind probe the subject, I was just sort of getting preliminary uh, aspects of the mind. And it seemed like he was trying to be engaged in the day, felt like he was a bit tired, uh, he was... Uh, sort of forcing his energy levels to be higher so that he could perform and seem active to others. Um, there were other subjects in front of him and sub the subject seemed engaged and it felt like he was trying to put a lot of effort towards being engaged with something specific that another subject was telling him and it basically mm -hmm. just seemed like he was focused on a paper on his desk as well so I, I was seeing other things in the room like there's an object between him and another subject and another subject that seemed like it was further back in the room like a little towards a door or something like that but that was pretty much uh, all the initial perceptions when i was approaching the subject okay well um that's interesting what then let's go on to your next page and now you're <coughs> you're focusing on uh, focus one uh, yeah, I see you have here focus one. So on your next page, that would be your page eight. What do you got there? Yeah, so in focus one, it was when I started to look into a deep mind probe of concern one. And I sort of started to pick up uh, grumbling emotions, agitation, followed by a little bit of a shrinking away energy, maybe not wanting to deal with this concern one, whatever that had to do with. Um, then I started to pick up a little bit of some different stuff. I started to feel this sense of posturing, like puffing out one's chest and not, not really physically puffing out one's chest, but it's sort of mentally. And it, it sort of felt like an animal trying to make itself look big and scary. 
and to project strength. Uh, it seemed like there was a lot of pride mixed up in this action as well, but it felt like it was kind of hollow at the same time, that all that pride puffing up the chest. Uh, really, it felt like a, a, a facade at the individual level, but it felt like there were more subjects involved, so he doesn't really have to think that it's all fake. Uh, it, it's really just his individual part that kind of felt kind of hollow. It felt like he was like a big talker, and emotionally he was engaged and it felt kind of like a passionate sports fan but it did feel a lot bigger than that and it also felt more serious with higher stakes than like a sports match but um the the subject felt insulated from any sort of hardship by his quote-unquote team whatever that would mean but uh i i kept on probing that and really it i started to feel like subject a uh he just doesn't feel like he's the strongest member of his group mm. but it just felt like he was more of a talker than a doer. But uh, mm. once again, a lot of posturing, a lot of pride, a lot of puffing up the chest, that type of energy. Okay. Well, we have a part of the uh, SRV uh, remote viewing procedure, something called a cognitive impairment scale that I see you used. Mm. Now, the, just for the audience, the cognitive impairment scale uh, covers a wide range of things that could affect someone's thinking uh, from internal stuff, which is considered natural or artificial. For example, if they have a chip in their head and, you know, that's affecting how they're thinking, that would be artificial. Natural could be due to some natural causes that their thinking is impaired in some way. And the scale goes from zero, which means they're really bright and great and everything's perfect, to, you know, more seriously impaired in some way. And then we have external stuff as well, such as hearing and physical. For example, if you have a, a spouse that is yelling and harassing you or someone in your employment that's harassing you and stuff like that, that could cause physical or he, that could cause hearing and physical uh, and, and cognitive impairment. You just feel beaten down because this person's sort of harassing you all the time. And it could also be extraterrestrial. Could, is there some extraterrestrial uh, external influence in the thinking, mental manipulation. David Jacobs used to call this um, a neural engagement where an extraterrestrial is mentally manipulating somebody. And then it could be AI, artificial intelligence, doing the same thing, uh, telepathic manipulation of, a, of the mental stuff. So external is uh, hearing and physical, and then ET, and then which is a live person, and then AI. An internal is natural and artificial. So that's that the scale goes, and the scale goes from you know no impairment at all, and the person's, person's perfectly there, to a lot of impairment and so on. And we, we use this scale often when we're trying to figure out uh, how much mental influence uh, or capacity someone has. All right, I see. So then you go into subject A with the Cognitive impairment scale. Why don't you describe what you were perceiving then? Also, I see you made notes so you can explain what those ratings are. Yeah, so um, subject A's cognitive impairment scale, it was uh, everything was pretty different. Uh, it felt at the natural, when we were looking at the internal brain, the internal brain, the natural levels of, I guess, cognitive impairment, that felt pretty low. I, and by, when I sort of say natural, let me just sort of extrapolate on each one of these things with the notes that I put down in the natural category of the internal aspects of the subject's brain I really just felt like his natural critical ink critical thinking efforts are not very dominant in the subject's mind and all of his decision making processes and patterns it just felt like there seemed to be something more dominant and large that swathed between his biases and it wasn't really his creation and it wasn't really his biases that were creating his decisions. So not a lot of critical thinking upstairs from him. When I looked at artificial... Okay, but you do have... So you have a sort of a mm. one-third the way up, or one-quarter of the way up. Yeah. So he wasn't, he's, he's more on the side of low levels of cognitive impairment. Yeah. And that would mean he's mostly there, but there is some cognitive impairment. Yeah, it just it just felt like whatever these... I guess whales, if you call them the of that were in his in his mind were just stronger than his 
aspects of himself and he wasn't like an invalid or anything like that or a robot or anything like that yeah, it yeah. was I see. he had his own he was a person and he just seemed like a subject but uh but he but the other things were more yeah well okay, when, so, it, when it came to critical thinking he wasn't doing much of it himself okay was, so what did you go then you went into any type of artificial impairment regarding his internal brain yeah so the artificial uh meter that was much higher that was actually hmm. maxed out so it, but it didn't, I, I didn't get the sense of anything as intense as like a chip in the brain type of thing. I, I mean, I didn't really notice that in the data that I picked up, but it felt like there was this massive, huge artificial agenda that involved an immense number of moving parts, way more mm -hmm. than just the subject and a lot of events. And it's not limited to the conventionally perceived digital nature of artificial elements when you think of the word artificial elements mm. it, it seemed like subject a's mind was one of many pawns in this large body of a force and it just felt like that was best way the best way to describe it like this force or a network or a framework and it just felt like pressure like a heavy cloud like a muffling noise in the mind that was this pressure and it's inside his head inside his head but it was like he was like a part of this larger thing it was like it, it was it was just through probing him i got this sense of this larger network of stuff and that, that was like he was like a little part in that but basically it seemed like a method uh, like a like a larger framework of control that was mm. i was picking up on and it seemed artificial mm -hmm. in nature but it didn't evoke the same conventional stereotypical artificial things like that you would think of like technology or a chip in the head it was something different could it but, be could it be some drugs no i didn't think it was like a drug it, it kind of felt like something along the line of the tv show person of interest i, I know you and i have watched that show we are big fans of it but if anyone else has seen it it kind of seemed something along the lines of something like that but uh i probed the artificial aspect again in the external area and then i sort of started to get a bit more data about it but uh, anyway, if we move on to the external one, before okay. I go to that artificial aspect, I'll, I'll just point out the hearing and physical things, because that's really where the, the strong arming of this f network thing came into play. Uh, I see. So once again, I didn't feel like a chip in the brain was what was the strong arming force. I felt like when it came to the external influences, this external interference, Hearing and physical was also a very high ranking in the chart. It was maxed out, but um, mm. it, it felt like a massive amount of subject A's direction came from doing as he was told by other subjects. Mm. I see two subjects in black formal attire speaking to subject A, and he seems like he's just listening and agreeing. I actually didn't think that subject A ever considered disagreeing in these sort of meetings. So it, that was sort of the strong arming of what I felt was just one aspect of this larger artificial network and framework of things. So hmm. as I kept probing, though, uh, I continued probing for the, artif uh, the external extraterrestrial, external ET uh, influence. And that was very low. I, it was, I, I, I just didn't feel like that was a big force in the mind. I, I didn't pick up on anything really significant there. When I moved on then once again to artificial intelligence, AI, AI, in the external category, external interference, external influence, this was once again, I was picking up this sort of architect archetype sense where it's like this big framework, or this agenda, this force, this network with uh, multiple moving pieces. Subject A is just a part when probing these AI related prompts. And it just feel, felt like subject A was one of many subjects like him and they are part of this plan and the plan felt like mm. it was like this network like this greater body and it, it just it, it felt like subject a was not in charge of anything that he does it, it felt like he was mm. meant to seem or look like he was in charge that was like a function of his piece it felt like chess like like you're he was a piece on a chessboard and there was this artificial network that I guess you could equate to the player of the chessboard. But when you're the piece on the board, you're not in charge of you going places. The player puts you where you're supposed to be. Yeah. And that was really a big part of that. And I felt like the 
the hearing and physical sensations mixed with the artificial sensations in both external and internal probes that gave a an, an, this picture of this network, this force, this, this agenda that sort of dominated the, the mind and these sort of other subjects who were sort of the hearing and physical strong arming that sort of told him like you do this 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 and then he would just listen and agree and Mm -hmm. i think that also relates to the fact that i didn't feel like he made many critical thinking decisions at all just felt like from his natural mind he was pretty he i mean he was there but he didn't really engage any personal critical thinking in what he was doing i see so if i can figure it out that there's a that there's a lot of internal stuff going on, but it's not because of the mind like degrading or anything. Is but there's like there's like a like a cloud of stuff that's artificially sort of placed in the head, and then you have it coming mostly from physical people, like hearing and physical people. Uh, they're the people around him are doing it, and then you have some type of AI, uh, not not much ex eternal n- not much extraterrestrial physical people but some type of ai sort of a orchestration sort of network involved in the whole thing so hmm. this is that's is that correct yeah more, more or less i mean it seems like there was just that like you said that framework that artificial framework was there the people who sort of i guess enforced it who made the decisions physical outside of any sort of abstract space those seemed like those uh, those individuals in the black suits that I was seeing, and um, yeah, the his internal mind did sort of feel like there was this just a, a, this noise, this uh, like mm. if you were thinking of just photo editing or video editing, there was just noise, just yeah. the distortions that were just sort of there, but um, it just felt like he wasn't doing anything himself. It was just uh, he was there. I could sense him. But it was pretty much he was unengaged, like he was sitting there on a ride. And it was when he was making a move, that was a move somebody told him to make. So that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, that's interesting. Mm. So here, okay. So anyway, that's um, what about 13? Is there anything new on page 13? Uh, no, no, that's what I uh, said previously. It's just he's not in charge of anything he does. Uh, he's okay. He's meant to seem and look like he's in charge. That was definitely a big point. It, it felt like any sort of position of power that this subject has was a, okay. Was an image to others. All right, so. now we're switching over to Focus 2 on page 14. Uh, what do you get with Focus 2? You're beginning to, f- to focus on Focus 2 now. Well, in Focus 2, once again, looking at Subject A, it uh, felt like he was sort of heavy in the chest, grumbling, sort of felt like it was just hollow and empty inside the environment. It felt like it was empty energetically, not physically. I saw other subjects, but I just felt like it was low energy vibes. He wasn't really engaging much with anything or anyone around him. So that's you, can't, sort of, you have him in a hallway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in a hallway with doors on the side and so on. Yeah, it just felt like a interior of some sort of modern structure there were some subjects in okay some rooms. and then when you continue with focus two with the deep mind probe mm. this time you uh focused on concern one so what is that yeah so uh once i got to focus two revisiting concern one it felt like he was a bit removed from the energy going on here mm. it just felt like whatever this issue is, is far more distant from him specifically. I felt like he's, he has this posturing energy with the issue. And I just felt like he, he isn't, I, I, I just don't think he is as close to this issue anymore. It, 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 it felt like the issue was older. It felt like it was darker, more spread out, kind of like a gas dissipating in like some sort of large space. And mm. It just felt like he didn't have the same vigor as before, uh, and his attitudes and stance... I mean, it's not like he changed his attitude about the thing, or he changed his stance on the matter. It just felt like a deflated balloon. It just felt like it Mm. was a distant energy. It wasn't really a a big thing anymore. 
But. Okay. Um, you then went, the, you redid the cognitive impairment scale, but this time for focus two. Yeah. It looks a little different, but pretty similar to the first one. Yeah. But I, one last thing on the previous thing. I, I, when I say it, it's deflated distance, I didn't feel like the concern was gone. I, uh -huh. I just felt like he himself had a lot more of a distance from the issue than ah, before. I see. So I, I do, I, that's why I, I was sort of iterating that he, he has the same stance. He hasn't changed his attitudes on it because it's there. It's just far away from him specifically. Like, I see. Like I old see. news or something like that. It just wasn't something he was, like the trend was gone. The trend was over. Yeah, no, I get it. Okay, so yeah. what about the cognitive impairment scale for subject A with uh, focus two, okay. concern one? Yeah. So um, basically, it's pretty much the same. It, the, the scales are pretty much the same. Low on the, when you're looking at the internal brain, low on the natural scale, high on the artificial scale, not maxed out, but very high still. Um, looking at the notes I had for it, just low engagement naturally, just as before. Artificially, just once again, felt like subject A felt like a piece in a large network or a framework. It felt like an artificial network or framework, just as before. Mm -hmm. Felt like he's meant to perform a designated function, just like a piece on a chessboard. You know, the, the chess pieces, they're, does you, you, they perform a designated function. So I felt like that's what he's doing. He's just performing his designated function as part of the system that's bigger than him, far bigger than him. And... Uh, when looking at the external influences now, hearing and physical, it just felt like subject A is less engaged and not currently being dictated to or expected of action, yet he still feels like he is in the same position as before. Mm -hmm. He's like an asset to another force or group, but he's in standby mode, just to, to pull out a term. It just it felt like compared to focus one, in focus two, it feels like he's more in standby mode. Standby mode. It looks, from the looks of it, the hearing and physical. That sort of people around him mm. seems like the people around him have uh, stopped stopped harassing him to some extent, mm. um, or ignoring, or maybe they're more ignoring him now to some extent. But they're they're still there. You still have it ranked high in the cognitive impairment for hearing and physical. Just yeah. that that degradation makes me think that something. Something changed, almost like the, the harassers are sort of ignoring him a little bit. Not completely, but... Well, I, I, I go into this a little bit more as we hit the uh, artificial side of things. But okay, really keep going. It felt, well, really it felt like, um, just to point out uh, exactly, uh, just to respond to what you just said, it, it really felt like it was just they didn't need to use that piece on the board at the moment. It, it's not like yeah. they were ignoring him for any other reason besides the fact that it wasn't of any specific use to move that piece on the board at this particular focus. Hmm. So anyway, the uh, when it comes to other external influences, like the extraterrestrial influence, I, I really didn't feel much there again. I mean, it was slightly higher than before. I just sort of felt like subject A is being observed, but I just didn't feel any interaction. I just didn't feel anything besides just looking at the guy. It's okay. pretty much it. But, um, then once again, artificial, artificial intelligence from the external category. It felt like that was also, uh, once again, I, I, I didn't rank it as high as I did in focus one, but it was still on the higher end of the chart. And just as before, it felt like subject A is this pawn. He's this piece in a larger framework, but is now not currently in play. So just as I said before, that standby mode energy, it just felt like he was not in play at the moment like he was before. Uh, it, it felt like subject A, once again, is a chess piece. And it, it sort of felt like, from focus one's perspective, it felt like in that focus, the previous focus, focus one, that was when subject A being a chess piece was thrust into new territory. Mm. Sort of like mm. you move a piece far into the enemy's territory or into some new place on the board. And so you take the chess piece, you put it into a new territory, but now you're not moving the piece. It's just he's out there, and so it, that's kind of what it felt like. Subject A is a chess piece thrust into new territory at focus one, but now he is not being moved, and he's just in standby at his new position. Hmm. While the focus of the game, like if, from the player's perspective, these larger framework artificial mm -hmm. perspective, from the player's perspective, 
it's like they're looking at different pieces elsewhere. Mm-hmm. It's like their focus of the game, the action of the game, is someplace that's not where subject A is, specifically, as an individual. And, um, yeah, it just felt like subject A feels like a piece in this game, and he's not a player. It, but at no point in time did I feel like in this session that subject A was a player mm-hmm. in the game going on in this, in this greater framework. He feels like a piece from the beginning to the end, and it feels like... He's just uh, he's just not the focus of the player's attention mm. if you consider the player to be somewhat connected to this artificial network framework with yeah. an enormous number of pieces. I mean, he is like a very tiny part of this of this big network. So anyway, that was really all the data that I had for the target. All right. So you're ready to hear what the target is? Yeah, I'm excited. All right. Well, subject A, okay, now uh, everyone in the audience knows that Aziz had no knowledge of what this target is, so I'm telling him for the first time. Subject A is Joe Biden. Ah, now, cool. Now, um, the two focuses are, let me tell you what the concern is, mm. is uh, how much Joe Biden knows about the ET, UAP, UFO situation. Mm. So the big, cons- the big interest here is, uh, is he sort of aware and involved with this UFO, uh, UAP, extraterrestrial disclosure process going on at all? So focus one is when Joe Biden is in December of 2023, oh, when he is month. thinking about the idea of UAP or UFO disclosure. So, um, mm. you know, because it's in the news and there's congressional hearings, stuff like that. So sometime in December is when he's thinking about it. The first concern is, I mean, the first focus is, uh, what's his mental frame? What's going on in his mind when he's thinking? Is he being manipulated? That's what we're interested in. Is he blocking it? Does he know very much? You, you get, you've got pretty much of a interesting portrait here of a pawn rather than a mover and shaker. But, uh, anyway, so let me tell you what focus two is. The same thing, Joe Biden, how much he knows and is concerned about the... Uh, ET, UAP, UFO phenomena, but it's during the Democratic National Convention in Chicago on uh, August 22nd, 2024. So that's the last day of the convention. That'll be the day when whoever gets the nomination is making the acceptance speech and so on. So uh, the interest is what's happening with Joe Biden six, seven months from now when he's in the convention. Hmm. Eight months from now, yeah. Wow, that's a it's a bit discouraging for hoping that he's gonna be involved in any sort of disclosure, anything. Looking at this, I mean, it's uh, unless this this artificial framework of this plan or agenda, it, it, unless it decides that he's gonna talk about it, it looks like he's not gonna talk about it. I, I, Seems like he's not making any of these decisions himself, so the idea of him fighting for it just doesn't really seem like it's in the cards. Yeah, and in fact, uh, you have these, essentially, these men in black mm. around him. That's how you were describing. They were in dark, black, black formal attire, and they're speaking to subject A. Yeah. That's what you said, and he just listens and agrees. Yeah. So yeah. It, apparently the external, uh, the external influence is, is quite strong. Um, I see. Hmm. All right. So, so when you were saying the Democratic National Conference, of the six months later, is that that was also uh, checking in on him with regards to? Yeah, they were, we're waiting the to see if there's stuff. any. Uh, yeah, we wanted. I wanted basically to see w- when he's um, when the convention rolls around. Is is that a significant issue that's in his mind? Wow. So I, I guess if I had to sort of post a wager based on the session um i'm guessing whatever the the news cycle is extraterrestrial stuff might be a low a low uh, even lower than i guess maybe now uh issue a low issue that's not really gotten a lot of coverage i mean that's a i i I hope that's not the case but at least in the mainstream circles i guess people will be focused on the election type stuff six months from now far more than whatever's going on in the yeah well disclosure actually movement. It, it could be that the disclosure type of stuff is big but it's more likely that the mainstream media is going to be 
to suppressing the disclosure stuff yeah. while they focus on the political stuff. And yeah. it does look like subject A is, which is Joe Biden, is not really thinking about concern one come around to uh, a convention time, which means it's it's from the perspective of him and the Democratic Party, it doesn't look like it's become a central issue. Yeah, he didn't really seem like he had a good attitude about it earlier. He didn't really want to deal with it, but it's uh, yeah, it, it sort of seemed like he had a sort of this puffing his chest out, the pride and stuff like that. I mean, that was sort of those initial perceptions back at Focus One. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it just seemed really hollow. It seemed really like uh, maybe like a show. A fa- I said it was a facade. So it's uh, maybe maybe there's just a whole bunch of censorship that's <laughs> it's in the future now, with regards it, to this stuff. It may be that all of the presidential candidates are ignoring it because they want to have the focus on the current politics and they don't want to be distracted by a orchestrated media campaign against them mm. for being nuts or deluded with regard to ET stuff. So, But it also may mean that it's still a central issue uh, in, the, in the country, but that he's ignoring it. And But he, seems, he clearly seems to be thinking about it, but being manipulated in, the, in December. And in the convention time, from your data, it seems like it's a much more distant issue. And uh, there's not as much manipulation. There's still manipulation, but not as much. Mm-hmm. I guess that's because other, other things are taking center, center stage. Yeah. Well, I guess with regards to this issue, it, it's a, in summation, it might as well be something to say that he doesn't have his hands on the wheel when it comes to driving this car. And it's... Yeah. Uh, He's at most. He's just the face of, I guess in this case, the president. I mean, he's just the face of, yeah, what's, what's happening in this country because he's the president. But other than that, he's not involved in any of this stuff. It seems like he's just yeah. a backseat driver. A big take-home message for me from this session is that the uh, disclosure UAP UFO type situation is not going to be a central focus of anything dealing with the Democratic National Party or the or President Biden come around convention time. That's not something they want to engage with. That's what I'm picking up. Because if it was going to be a central focus, then it would be something that they'd, it would sort of be all-encompassing with regard to almost all issues, and it would sort of pop up in the second part of the session, and it's just not there. Yeah. All right, well, a bit of a bummer. Uh, but it's a, it's a, I guess it's an expected bummer now that I know the target. You know, I, I didn't really have too much faith he it, would be involved in It's not necessarily a bummer because we were expecting Biden to not be on the cutting edge of that issue in the first place. Mm. Um, that he's not engaging it very much, even in December, and even in, in August, isn't really that much of a surprise. Mm. Uh, we don't know what the other candidates will do. We've only looked at him. Mm. And um, so it may be something's happening, but central politics is just sort of ignoring the issue. Yeah. Well, uh, on the bright side, though, I am glad that I deducted Bernie Sanders. He, you know, just a sort of paler skin and the older male and uh, sort of had a light hues hair uh that's that's all accurate descriptions of the of the subject so I'm also he was a, he that. was a presidential candidate so that was a yeah yeah that was so you, you had the sort of the mental flavor of a presidential candidate also the oh. uh the navy dark navy attire uh formal attire that was yeah it's acceptable yeah. so all right well i'm happy about that and uh hopefully the disclosure thing really does pick up some steam in some other hands because it's definitely not going to pick up steam in this guy's hands. Yeah, and I think that's a real possibility. We have to keep Mm. open with that idea, and we have to... But it's really valuable, your session, because even if there is a steamroller with regard to other areas of society, it's interesting Mm. to know that the mainstream political stuff is going to be still in the resistance mode. Mm. So this doesn't tell us whether the disclosure movement is gaining steam. Yeah. This just tells us that there's still resistance from the establishment. Yeah, when it comes to this subject, it's definitely yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, controlled. So, 
Okay, Aziz, great. Now we move on to the next target. Sounds great.